What up, yo? And we're back again. Told y'all yesterday, uh, was going to discuss the Why More Black Women Should Marry White Men article written in the New York Post. And there's a lot to unpack with that article. There's a lot of truth that needs to be spoken about that situation also. So you have the the article for me what it started was 2014. And for me, it dates back even further, but that's kind of where you start to realize in mainstream media, they're starting to become open that there's a divide amongst black men and black women. So we have this, this article where it states that across America, black girls are up to 50% more likely than black boys to graduate from high school. A report, the NAACP and SHOT Foundation for Public Education. Now, of course, when that, that message and that statement is made, like I stated yesterday, 78% of all black teachers are what women. Again, I keep trying to tell you guys, put the pieces together. You have to understand the hands that are at play, the chefs that are in the kitchen at this point. There's a lot of things going on around you that nobody wants to talk about. They want to act like these things aren't happening. They want to act like when I say the gynocracy exists. No, that's not true. But again, if you have all of these women, the I can do bad all by myself, those are 78% of the black teachers. Now, I know what you're going to say is, yeah, but that's not their parents. Well, now. The successful black women and also the black women who what? Who aren't college educated. You have to think of the women who work in two jobs, single mothers, 60, 70 hours a week. Ain't no time to do homework with those children. There's really no interaction with those children like that. There's some... Hey, mommy, how you doing? Hey, child, how you doing? I love you. I love you. We keep it moving. The person who's truly rearing your child is the educational system. It's your children's teacher. It's why, again, I tell you, when we start moving around and you have parents blaming teachers for their child's ineptitude educationally, intellectually, I always tell people that's not a teacher's job. That teacher's job, to be honest with you, is to teach a curriculum, but it's also to reinforce more so through six, seven hours a day what you're teaching them at home. The the majority of the work should be being done at home. That's not the way it is, though. At this point, it's life imitating art. That's the world we live in. See, at this point, the teachers are doing the rearing. And if you understand that the educational system is an indoctrination system, then we understand how we get where we get to. So when we get to the genesis of it, what are we talking about? Everything goes back to what? Barbie and Ken. See, Ken never really cared for the black dog, which is why Black girls always say what? They don't say we need a black Ken. They say, no, we need a black Barbie. Because they're fine being with white Ken. This is what I tell you guys a lot of times. My brain operates on a different frequency. I see things that other people don't see. I acknowledge things that other people don't acknowledge. Sometimes I won't say it. But I say a lot of things a lot of times. Most people just glance straight over and don't pay any attention to 
and sometimes I think that's what I should gear this podcast more toward. But there's still that internal fight within me that wants to touch on the everyday subjects and topics that are going on currently. This is a shitload of stuff I could talk about to you guys from the past that made me red pill, real red pill, that opened my eyes up, that took me down a rabbit hole, that showed me all these things. There's a lot of those things I want to talk about. But if we talk about the past, then we can't really deal with the present or the future. So it is a tough dilemma to kind of deal with. But again, as we go back to that, it all starts with Barbie and Ken. That's where most little girls learn about marriage, playing house, all of that. So when they're watching those commercials, they want to be Barbie. Barbie is white, though, with the blonde hair, blue eyes. It's why black girls despise white women so much. The root of that really goes back to Barbie. Barbie and Ken. Because for them, they always wanted Ken. Ken was with Barbie. She was never good enough to be with Ken. So then when black men, because if you ever notice, especially the black men who listening, when black men see black women with white men, they don't really say too much of shit. Don't even bother them. When black women see black men with white women, there's a trigger. And you know why that trigger is? Because now it's, we want a Ken, Ken chose Barbie. And now when we beg for the black Barbie doll they gave us that, and they gave us the black Ken, even the black Ken was with white Barbie, but we represent black Ken. They didn't want a black Ken, but they made a black Ken because they wasn't trying to reinforce interracial marriage at that point. But then when they made the black Ken, it was, but damn, even he won't Barbie. See, the white girl represents Barbie. And I know you're probably thinking this is crazy. But it's not crazy if you start operating on a premise that everything we do as, as adults, all of the hurt, all of the anger, it comes from childhood trauma. Once you understand that premise, then you'll understand how life kind of operates. At a certain point, you'll understand. Once you get a certain age, the indoctrination is done. It's the hamster on the wheel at that point. But you must, you must watch what children are involved in between the ages of 1 and 10. Those are very pivotal years. Very pivotal. I always give the example before I finish up with this. You watch a child when they're young. You take them outside. You take them on roller coasters. You take them to the top of a mountain. What do they always say? Man, I wish I could fly. I'm going to figure out how to fly. I could be like Superman. They're thrill seekers. They're problem solvers. As they get older, take that same child back six years later. He's 11 to 12 years old. Take him to the top of a, a mountain. He look over the edge and what does he say? Hey, daddy, we're getting too close to the edge. Get back. We could fall and die. The indoctrination has happened already. It's over. Just that quick. You don't really realize it because, again, like I tell you, when you're watching television and you listen listening to radio and they say back to your regularly scheduled programming, you don't take that as literal. But it is literal. So in college, African-American women outnumber men by roughly two to one, notes the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation. And with black men six times more likely to be incarcerated than white men, educated black women like Northern Girl lack the pool of suitable mates their white counterparts take for granted. Which is why I say when I see a lot of successful black men in sales and they whining and bickering over women is, dog, the world is your oyster of available black women. But what it is is As we break this down, those men were nerds in high school. So their fantasy and their childhood trauma was what? It takes them back to third, fourth, fifth grade. When they wanted the pretty girl and they wanted to give her the Valentine's Day candy, and she laughed at him. She told him he was ugly. He was fat. He was a nerd. He was corny. Took him to high school. Couldn't get a prom date. So he took 
one of the friends from church or a family member went with him or somebody from church's daughter or mother's friend, his child went with him. So his dream now is to get a Sierra. It's why they get so upset when they see the Sierras with Russell Wilson's. That's why. I mean, with future, because to them is. We were told if we went to school and took care of our business and were stand up dudes and good dudes, the beautiful woman and the family would be ready made for us. Now, it's the same. That's the same way the socially awkward black woman operates. It's just what? They outnumber us two to one. We incarcerated six times more than white men. So now that takes some more out. So now we probably at 10 to 12 to one. Suitable candidates for black women. That puts us at what? 20 to one odds now. Because now you got dudes who just homeless and bums. So now it's 20 to one. So now if you're saying you have to get a, a man who's intellectually on that black woman's level, now we at maybe 100, 200 to one. Knock out those men who are now homosexual or closeted. Now we at 1,000, 2,000 to one. She don't really have the odds that a lot of men think she has. She doesn't have the pickings. Whereas for playboys, men who don't have a problem getting women, they understand I have my pick will come from, especially for a playboy who got some swag. He can have any anywhere between every two, 3,000 black women to one for him. They'll all be fighting for him. He'll have his choice. Now, for the socially awkward dude, he'll get his choice with the woman. He'll have some good options. But again, they'll lay in the bed and look at the ceiling together. He'll be afraid to touch her. In turn, most of the intellectual black women that this article is going to be talking about the women with the doctorates and the master's degrees, they kind of grew up socially awkward. They won't admit it, but they did. So now they ain't going to put the moves on. Buddy ain't going to put the moves on. So now nobody does nothing to each other. They just, yeah, we got good conversation, but there's no chemistry. So now she go back to her girls. Yeah, he a lame. He go back to his guys. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't really feel it. But they both terrified of rejection. So when you get into the Katanji Browns and the Kamala Harris, there's a reason why they have to pick white men. And we'll get to that when we get to that article. Now, because you do have black educated black women who try and pretend they're intellectuals and they're not. And before we get to that article, I'm going to play that clip for y'all. Also, oh, why a lot of those black women are single and should go looking for white men. So, yet black women show, okay, and with black men six times more likely to be incarcerated than white men, educated black women like Northern Girl lack the pool of suitable mates their white counterparts take for granted. Yet black women show... Little sign of abandoning the race. It's not that they show little sign. They would love to abandon it. White men just aren't really getting ready to marry black women unless they have. Most white white men, when you talk to them, I'm not going to generalize it and even give a, I'm not going to give a number, I should say. Majority of them know they want runway model type women. That's not black women. They want women five foot five, five foot six, 105, 110 pounds. Black women are curvy, which is why I tell you when you see black women say that they not the beauty standard, that's bullshit. Because when you watch white women now, for those who go to the gym, what do you see? Everybody doing all these butt exercises. You see all these white women now trying to get full of lips. Everybody with the hoop earrings. Everybody is trying to get all these Afrocentric looks now. 
And since white men are not attracted to that, who are those white women getting those bodies for now? Which is why I've told you in episodes prior, a lot of these white feminists use black women to do their dirty work. And behind those black women's back, those white women come right in, take them in, and it leaves black women sitting in a corner full of rage and anger, wondering why nobody picked me. When in fact, I've told people, I've told women this, mind your business, stay out of that shit. That feminine shit, to be honest with you, that ain't got nothing to do with black people. That's white women dealing with white men. That's a whole nother power struggle. You don't really have anything to do with. But black women wanted to join that fight. They want to be supreme when it comes to women. And for me, like I said, it, it don't bother me. I don't have a problem dating women at this. I'm married. I'm, I ain't on the market no more. But when I wasn't married to my wife now, dating just wasn't an issue. Like I don't have a problem sitting down, talking to women, chilling with women. I got rules and things I abide by when I'm dating. But it's, not, it's, it's never been that big of a deal for me. I tell my wife that it's not hard for women to get men, but women want a certain type of man, which again, we went into in previous episodes. So indeed, of all U.S. demographic groups, African-American women are least likely to date or marry across ethnic lines. Fewer than 10 percent of black women have non-black spouses less than half the number of black men. So part of this, this external, see again, though, I, black men don't have a problem getting women. And the reason they marry out, there's some reasons for that. We probably won't talk about this in this episode. Again, I'm going to try and stay on the topic before I go off on a tangent. Trouble in 2013 and 2009 reports from dating network OkCupid. Man, I had some fun on that while I was uh, after I got divorced. You meet some interesting people who have some interesting stories, man. That much I can tell you. It's kind of where I started to understand you don't need to. Women are women. We love to separate a lot of this stuff and say it's black women, white women behave like this, Hispanic women, Asian women. Though you're going to meet some alpha women and you're going to meet some beta women. That's kind of all I can really tell men, to be honest with you. But women are women. They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. But you meet a feminist woman, she's going to have the rhetoric. Same rhetoric the black woman going to have. If she comes from a certain type of background or was raised by a certain type of parent, I've met white, I can do bad all by myself women. I've met Hispanic, I can do bad all by myself women. So again, I, I know already factually, that's not a black woman thing. That's just a woman thing. And they'll behave a certain way. Trouble in 2013 and 20, 2009 reports from dating network OKCupid revealed that black women are the site's least desired demographic, even by black men. Now, some of that is going to be the, 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 pro, the way the profiles are written. Some of that is going to be a lot of our black women mean mug and they just look, they have resting bitch face when you see profile pictures. Then you start seeing, I got five kids. I ain't looking for no baby mama drama. I need somebody with his stuff together, somebody house, car, good job. And it's like, yeah, I'm not coming in to be no stepfather. And you got multiple baby fathers. And who are you to judge? So, We go down a little bit to this article and it says, 
For this crowd, finding a black man, any black man, is always preferable to dating outside the race. No matter the cost, Banks bluntly states black women are expected to marry down before they marry out. And see, the problem sometimes when you say marry down is they're going to say financially. So now, you meet a woman, she's making 100, 150. He's making 50 to 70. Together, they make what they make. Now, she can find somebody who makes what she makes. But see, then here comes the, dial- the the dilemma. He makes two, she makes 150. Now they think, because of the way she's wired, she thinks she's in competition with him now. So now this the whole marriage is filled with one up in each other. But now we got a man working 60, 70 hours a week. We got a mother working 50, 60 hours a week. Who's taking care of the children? See, people don't understand when you get married for a lot of... When you talk about marriage, marriage is really for child rearing. It's for family building. If you ain't really getting ready to build no family, there, there really is no logical need to get married. Now, if you want to be a team together, you can be a team together without getting married. But again, they want to get married because of what? Ken and Barbie, the dream they were sold. Again, previous episodes, I've told you what? For most women, not even black women, for most women, most successful college-educated black women, the portrait is already painted. The house, there's her, there's the house in the background, there's the green grass, perfect manicured lawn, white picket fence, car in the driveway, dog. Then there's a silhouette. She's just looking to feel the silhouette. She feels pressed for time now because she needs the silhouette filled. And with that silhouette being filled, then comes child. It's not really that she's choosing you. She's settling for you. You have to understand that. She knows now in her mid-30s to late-30s, she's running out of time. She's running out of time to become a parent, but she's running out of time of being chosen because now she understands what? Her breasts are starting to sag. She don't have the bop and the pop she used to have. Things ain't sitting right the way they used to sit. It's a lot harder for her to keep the weight off. And at 36, 37, she understands now, I'm in competition with 23, 24-year-old women fresh out of college with master's degrees, with no children, very fertile, and a whole life ahead of them without all of the baggage. She can't compete with that. She understands that. That's where she chooses now what? That's where she doubles back and she goes to find what? The so-called educated lane. That again is when I've told you in prior episodes. That's when you get the hey big head in Facebook Messenger or the Instagram DMs or the Twitter DMs. That's when you get that, yeah, I was just checking in on you. I was trying to see what you was up to. Now, when they're doing that, they're not doing that really because they want you. They just understand now. Even you may be getting ready to get taken off the market by one of these young chicks. And she knows she can have you. So at this point, it's either I take him or I take nothing. I'll take something. Now, she's still, when we getting her back blew out by Tyrone or John John, same as you see Jaden Will. She's still going to be out doing what she's doing, but she wants the security now of family, husband, and children. She wants companionship. So it goes to say, because black men are so beleaguered, black women are made to feel like it's their duty to help a brother out, Banks recently said. 
black women face a kind of pressure, a type of survivor's guilt, he added, that simply doesn't affect white women in the same way. And I'm going to call Bull here because what? That same guy that, that he'll be saying help a brother out, he'll make 60, 70 grand. And he'll go marry a white woman or a Hispanic woman. And they'll live a nice middle class life and be just fine. And those successful black women who never wanted him, they'll critique him for abandoning his race. You can handle a man like me. I mean, a woman like me. You can handle a woman like me. That's, that's exactly what she'll tell him. You took the easy way out. I was too strong for you. But she never would have gave him a shot. She only cares now because she's sitting home alone and she has no options. And everything he has now looks cool. He's comfortable. Because, see, at a certain point, and we may go over that episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville that I saw yesterday. There's a point of real red pill that human beings get when they make enough money. They realize money does not equate to happiness. But you must make enough to finally realize that. Most impoverished people, what they truly think their issue is, is money. But you have to ask yourself, before money existed, people were very happy, lived full lives. Back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, people lived middle class lives in or lower middle class, lower middle class lives. Very content and happy. And I won't even say happy, they were content. A lot of people don't realize that though till they get it. See, she gets the 200, 300 grand. She gets herself in the gym. She does all of these things. She's achieved everything. And she laughed at dude who was making 70 grand. But when she gets in her 40s, the dude with the 70 grand is now making, in his mid-40s, he's now making what? 80, 90 grand. He's married with his wife. They have a middle-class life. He has his children. And he seems content. Yeah, she's driving a Benz with nobody to share anything with, nobody to come home and talk to. Life becomes way more than money. But only people, again, who haven't touched it, they believe that. It's why I have that conversation when I say, all you have to do a lot of times if you want to know what somebody is really built, how somebody is built, ask them, what is success to you? If they tell you it's money, that's an empty person. Life will always be about memories and moments. And a lot of times when you when you lose your loved ones, those memories and moments really involve money. When a man loses his OG, that father figure to him, or that spiritual advisor, all he really talks about is those beers, those walks, those conversations, that building. They don't talk about money. So see, all that happiness he had, that great feeling, that sorrow, he's longing for those conversations now. He's longing for that building process that he's losing now. He can no longer build with dude. It ain't about the money. Now, these unions can be disastrous, not least thanks to role reversal, intellectually outmatched and economically emasculated black men get displaced as primary breadwinners while leaving black women burdened and burned out. Frustrations arise, relationships crumble, and the family disintegrates. And see, is where they put you in a trick bag at. Because what they'll tell you is the dude, that black woman is going to tell you the dude who doesn't have enough money and can't match her hustle, he don't have it. He ain't worthy. The dude who can is above it, she's going to say he behaves and participates in toxic masculinity. He's trying to put her down. He's trying to use his money to exert his power. So see, to date a woman like that, you can't win one way or the other. You have to truly be an alpha to deal with a woman like that. A beta male will never be able to deal with a woman like that. 
Today, 70% of all black children are born out of wedlock and black couples have the highest divorce rates in the nation. Can't disagree there, I'm part of that number. Black women seeking successful family lives, banks suggest, can no longer afford to exclude other races. And they can't. Love shouldn't come with a color or race. If you need companionship or you want to get away from being lonely or you want to find your utopia, just got to find who matches you. That's it. You don't owe it to anybody again to be, yo, I'm keeping the black. You're not keeping the black race alive. There is no black race. It doesn't exist. Only pro-blacks feed you that BS for the hustle, man. It's all, it's all for financial gain. Now, as a former lesbian, McCray's path to matrimony was clearly unconventional. A former lesbian. <laughs> We don't even go there today. But her choice of a mate, a Caucasian, would help lead to happy, successful family that has proven so elusive for Nordlinger. Nordlinger. And when they say this now, what McCray is stating to you, Charlene McCray, Shirelaine McCray is stating to you is what? I would rather be a lesbian than be with a black man. Once I found a Caucasian one, I didn't want to be a lesbian anymore. I like men again. So now we deal with the other elephant in the room. I told you that video I wanted you guys to hear. And I want you to listen very closely because this is very, very disturbing. What I'm about to play you. But it will also show you why black women should follow their hearts and go pursue white men, Hispanic men, Asian men. The chain, okay? Eve, whose name is Divestor, having this conversation. Check it out. I was wondering why no one thought to say and voice their opinion that when we look at, when I look at these white men, they are the epitome of masculine and watching some of these police officers manhandle these black men in the street is very attractive and it's a turn on, you know? And I'm wondering, does anybody else do like that? Hold on. No. I want you to listen. This is a woman called Divest is Zealot. This is a woman with a lot of subscribers. This is a black woman. These are black feminists. Now all of this fighting that all of these women were doing out here in the street, she just told you what? I, was, I get sexually aroused and turned on when I see white cops beating the shit out of black men out here. This is porn for them. And see, all I do is try and give it to y'all in the raw, man. Let you understand. You got toxic femininity. You got toxic masculinity. For women, you wanted to stay away from toxic masculinity. For men, you want to stop trying to save women who are toxic, who belong and believe in toxic femininity. That's why I tell you it's about 30%, 20 to 30% that can be saved. Those 20 to 30 have to come together and let that other 70 to 80 die and kill itself off. Let them be the world's problem. But you can't continue to keep trying to save them. They don't want to be saved. There's a sickness going on with them. There's a lot of childhood trauma. There's stuff that happened in elementary school and in high school that they haven't dealt with. And it manifests itself in relationships in right here now. That's the best thing about the internet now. People will let you see exactly who they are. Because they don't think it's consequences. 
Uh, hold on. Yes, Lord. Uh, um, y'all <laughs> off the chain, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, instead of her stopping that or removing that person from the panel, she says what? Y'all off the chain. And they laughing about it. Now, again, black man, this is what I tell you when you say, hey, man, you out of pocket, dog, for the way. This is what I sit and listen to. See, when I'm down the rabbit hole and I'm in the, the clouds, I'm just watching. Just watching people's responses to things. They'll tell you everything you need to know about them if you just sit patient long enough and listen. Now, when you hear that, though, she said that's discord talk. And what is discord talk? That's the little social app where we had a little groups. I'm in the discord where you can act up and you cut up in private. So that lets you know they laughing about this in the open. You don't even want to know what's going on in private. But then it takes me back to the last article when they say black women are the least desired. This is why. Because they'll tell you that resting bitch face. Oh, I ain't mean. I ain't nasty. I ain't surly. I ain't angry. I ain't aggressive. It's just my face. It's just life. Listen to how you sit around and talk about people when you huddled up. You are who you are. I was like, why has nobody said that? You know, because I'm like, that's masculine. You talk about masculine. We say that all the time in Discord, Tanisha. <laughs> we say that all the time in the Discord. That's masculine. Watching white cops destroy black men. And this is who y'all keep caping for. This is what you want to save. You got to let it go, bruh. These type black women, you got to let it go. There's some good black women out there, but these type that y'all want to sit and fuss and argue with to show them you right, let them go ahead and die off, man. Let them have it. Let them be white man's burden, man. Let them be the Asian man's burden. If that's what they want, hey, man, go right ahead. You ain't got to chase them, man. Let it go. Back in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to save that one for the back room when we got the door closed. <laughs> Get with so you use the hard R for long. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about we say the hard R so hard it sounds like we growling back there. So see, we say the hard R so hard. Sound like we growling. So not nigga, niggers. But if they heard a white person say they would be offended by it. If a white person, white man called them a nigger, all hell would break loose. But see, it's amusing as long as we can talk about black men this way. They're uh, around this bitch. So, Tanisha, you got to come back there with a. And if you haven't seen it, this is the. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. She uses on her. Now, that's somebody's mother, probably. Sad, but it's somebody's mother. And as we go into the other part of this conversation of why Black women and those type of black women should pursue white men and other races, we don't want you. The numbers show you. We're not really interested in your kind anymore. There's a large, large uprising of men who have black men who have joined SYSBM, Save Yourself Black Man. There's a large, large, large uprising of men who have just, hey, man, pump and dump. I don't agree with pump and dump, but that's why you have men who are now, hey, I'm just pump and dump. Or I'd rather pay a prostitute. There are so many men who can't wait for prostitution to be universally legal. 
because they would rather just, hey, I would much rather pay somebody to just have sex than to literally have to deal with you and your shit on a day-to-day basis. It's disgusting. It's disgraceful. Now, is that the same on the black side with toxic masculinity? It sure is. Because it's those same men on the other side who do what? And this is why I tell you as I wrap this up. And I may do separately the article of why more black women should consider marrying white men. I think I'll go into that article on tomorrow night's episode. But we'll talk about now, though, the other issue. The other issue is you have incels who are men. The incel men who do what? They all want all women to die. So again, the pendulum is too far left for the women and it's swinging too far right for the men. And because we grow up with brothers and sisters and mothers and aunties who all kind of are picking sides in this, the people who are decent and cool, they stuck in the middle. And they try and stay quiet. Then you have black women who feel in that article that is correct, that there's an obligation to date down. There's an obligation to deal with hood dudes and hood boogers for black men. There's nothing wrong with a hood dude if he's out of the street. If you're a successful black woman, you shouldn't be dealing with a guy who's stealing an illegal activity. If he used to be, it's nothing wrong with that. If he's moved on and yo, honest days work, entrepreneur, nine to five working for somebody, however he getting it. If it's above the board, above the line, it is what it is. Don't let other people shame you in dealing with him. Because his code, quite honestly, will make him a lot more trustworthy and he's a lot more accountable than the so-called educated lane. Because the educated lane has never had to live by a code. So he doesn't really know how to be there for somebody. The educated lame is what? He won't date a Katanji Brown or Kamala Harris because he feels what? Intimidated. All he brings to the relationship is what? Money and his degree. She comes with money and her degree. He feels what? Useless in a relationship. When you meet certain chicks and you say, okay, outside of sex and cooking, what else do you bring? And they sit with that puzzled look. It's because they don't bring anything else. There's no depth to that person. As a woman, when you go holler at dude, what else do you bring besides money and penis and protection to this relationship? If he has no answer, he has no depth. And they should have answers because if they don't have answers, who's going to be teaching the children the jewels? Who's giving the lessons here? If all we can really provide is sex, food, money, and protection, then all we are creating children to do what? More hamsters on a wheel. Nobody to understand how to get off the wheel, think outside the box, go create their own wheel, and start having hamsters run on their wheel. So again, you want to stay away, you ladies, want to stay away from the far right. You men, you want to stay away from the far left. What you want to find is that 20 to 30 in the middle. It's your boy, The Hood Nerd, though. I'm out.